This lesson is about how to aggregate data from a raster inside different polygon features in R. In a previous lesson, we learned how to extract raster values at given points. So if we had an observation point, we could get information from a raster at that point. But what happens when we're working with polygons and we need information about the raster data inside the polygon as a whole? We can do the same kind of extraction or aggregation within polygons. And to illustrate that, let's go ahead and start by first loading uh, the SF and STARS packages. So library SF, that'll let us work with the polygon data, and library STARS to let us work with the raster data. And then we'll load the soils data that we learned about in the last lesson. So that's harv underscore soils and assign it the output of stread data slash harv slash harvsoils.shp. And then for raster data, we'll go ahead and load the elevation data or the digital terrain model for Harvard, but this time we'll load a different digital terrain model that includes data for the entire site. And so that'll be harv underscore DTM and assign it the output of read stars, which we use for reading and raster data. And then it's data slash harv slash harv underscore DTM, but now it's full dot tip. And let's go ahead and graph this data uh, just to see uh, what things look like so far. So we'll go ahead and do ggplot plus geom stars data is equal to our harv DTM plus geom SF for plotting our polygon data. Data is equal to harv underscore soils, but alpha is set equal to zero so that we can see through that polygon layer. And apparently this morning I'm always going to forget to load ggplot for graphing, even though it's right there in my notes. And so we'll go ahead and add that. Uh, and I'm also going to add dplyr while I'm up here for something we're going to do later. So now let's make our graph. And so if we look at this, uh, we can see uh, that we've got a raster that's bigger than the full site, uh, and then we have our soils information uh, inside of it. If we want to understand whether the polygon fields are related to the raster in some way, we need to extract data about that raster within each polygon. And we do this with the aggregate function, just like we did for points. And remember that the arguments to the aggregate function are first the raster, then the vector that we want to aggregate values to, and then the function that we want to use to combine those different pixels. And so let's start by calculating the average elevation in each soil polygon. And we'll call this elevs by soil. And we'll assign that the output from aggregate. We start with the raster, so that's harv underscore DTM. Then the vector that we want to extract or aggregate information at, and so that's harv soils. And then finally, the function that we want to calculate. So within one of these polygons, there are a whole bunch of pixels. And so what, how do we calculate a value from all of those pixels? And so in this case, we're going to use the mean. And this is why we needed this 
for points, even though it didn't make quite as much sense for points. And we can go ahead and run this. And you can think of what this code is doing as being very similar to group by and summarize in dplyr, but spatial. The function groups this digital terrain model into groups of pixels that fall within each soil polygon, and then it summarizes those pixels uh, by calculating the mean value uh, of all the pixels inside the polygon. So it's a very similar process, it's just spatial. The elevations for each polygon are then stored in elevs by soil, but just like when we did this points, they're inside an object in that variable. And so we add dollar sign, and then if we hit tab, since there's only one thing in there, it'll auto-complete, and it's harv underscore dtm full dot tiff. So again, it's just named it based on the raster that that information was extracted from. And if we run this, we'll see uh, that we get a bunch of different elevations. And these are in the same order that our features are in harv soils. And so we can add them uh, to Harv soils in whatever our favorite way is for adding new columns to a data frame. I'm going to use mutate from dplyr. And so I'll say Harv soils and then assign it the output from mutate. And remember, mutate is going to take a data frame, add some columns to it, and then return that as a new data frame. And so I'm going to take the old version of hard soil of Harv soils and add something to it. And that's going to have the name elevation. So that's going to be the name for my new column. And that's going to be equal to elevs by soil dollar sign. And then I'm going to hit tab. And we can now go look at Harv soils, and we can see that in addition to the information we had before, we now have an elevation column. And now we can use that elevation column that's stored in our simple features object to make new maps. And so let's plot our soils map, but colored by the average elevation in that soils region. So we can say ggplot plus geomsf to make a vector map. Data is equal to harv soils. And now we want to color the regions based on their elevation. So we'll say mapping is equal to aes. And then we set the fill equal to our new column, elevation plus, and then we'll go ahead and add our scale fill viridis to set the viridis color ramp. But now, because these are elevations, it's a continuous variable, and so we'll go back to the continuous scale version of this color ramp. And so now we have uh, this nice map showing us these regions by soil type. And in fact, now we probably have a better understanding of why there's this little isolated special soil type here in this bigger polygon. And it's because that's uh, a really high elevation region with different soil. So that's the basic idea behind how to aggregate data from rasters inside of polygons. We use the aggregate function, which takes the raster that we want to extract information from, the polygon vector data, where we want to extract that information, and then the function that we want to calculate on all of the pixels within a single polygon. Once we've done that, we can add it back to our initial special features object 
uh, by using mutate or some other way of adding a new column to a data frame. And then we can use that new information for making new maps. And let's just go ahead and do an initial visualization of this. Uh, I'm going to slide myself over here so that we can I'm going to go ahead and slide myself over. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and slide myself over uh, so that we can see graphs to the side. Oh my. If we want 